Hello, my name is Matt Connor from Network Insight and welcome to my technical tutorial on DMVPN. DMVPN stands for Dynamic Multipoint VPN and is a routing technique we can use to build VPN networks with multiple sites without having to statically configure all of the devices. In this technical demonstration, we will start with the core building block of DMVPN, which is GRE. Generic Routing Encapsulation is a tunneling protocol developed by Cisco Systems that can encapsulate a wide variety of network layer protocols inside virtual point-to-point -point links or point-to-multipoint links over an IP network. We will then move to add the DMVPN configuration parameters and depending on the DMVPN phase you want to implement, DMVPN can be enabled with just a few commands. Obviously, you need to have the underlay in place as you know that DMVPN operates as an overlay that lays on top of an existing underlay network. So in this technical demonstration, we will go through DMVPN phase one, which is the starting point of DMVPN. And then we will touch on DMVPN phase three. We will have a look at the various DMVPN and NHRP configuration parameters along with the show commands. As you can see, we're using Cisco Modeling Labs with a non-commercial license, and I have a small network topology. We have a five node design, but we really only need to show the configuration of two of them to display the basics of GRE, which will be R11 and R12, which hold the interfaces for the source and destination endpoints of the GRE tunnel. You may also notice that there's a router labeled SP in the middle. This is just for connectivity and represents the underlay that I mentioned in the introduction. So the underlay network just provides a transport for the overlay network. And we have a couple of network ranges I'd like to walk you through. Well, firstly, we have the 172.16 subnets. This is the transport, which is the underlay network. Then I have the 192.168.100. This is used for the GRE network, which is the overlay network. I also have a couple of LAN networks hanging off R11, R12, and I've got these connected to unmanaged switches. So now that you have an idea of the topology, let's jump right into the CLI and check out the configuration that I already have in place. So on R11, we have a transport network which is attached to GIG00. Then we have a LAN network which is attached to GIG01. So we also have the GRE tunnel, which is tunnel one. And the purpose of the GRE tunnel is to help you advertise the LAN networks across it. So let's have a look at the quick configuration on tunnel one and we do a show run in on tunnel one. So the GRE tunnel needs a couple of things for it to be operational. Well, firstly, it needs a tunnel source. So the source interface indicates the interface that will be used for encapsulation and de-encapsulation of GRE tunnel. So the tunnel source can be a physical interface like it is in our case, or it could be a loopback interface. Then we have the tunnel destination. So we need to identify the tunnel destination by using the interface parameter command tunnel destination IP address. So the tunnel destination is remote routers underlay IP address towards which a local router sends GRE packets. Then we need to assign an IP address. So we allocate an IP address to the tunnel interface by using the command IP address subnet mask. So once you've got the basis in place, then you want to view the status of the GRE tunnel. And we do this with the show interface tunnel command. So when the GRE tunnel is configured, the state of the tunnel can be verified with the following command. So notice that the output includes a tunnel source and destination addresses that we just spoke about. It also includes parameters such as the keep alive values, if any are set, and the tunnel line protocol state. And it also indicates that this tunnel is a GRE IP tunnel. Next, I want to look at the routing table of the destination just to point out one thing. And this is about recursive routing. So recursive routing occurs when the router learns the destination IP address for the tunnel interface through the tunnel itself. Now, when this happens, it removes the previous entry for the tunnel destination IP address from the routing table. And this makes the tunnel destination inaccessible. And as you can see from this design, the tunnel destination that I have is reachable via gig 00 and not the tunnel interface. So as I already mentioned, I have two routing protocols in this design. I've got EIGRP across the GRE tunnel, and I also have RIP in the underlay. 
So let's have a look at the EIGRP neighbors. So I'm running EIGRP over the tunnel interface and my EIGRP is a remote tunnel endpoint and you will notice the address of the 192.168.100 and if you recall that this is the IP address we assign to the tunnel configuration. Now let's look at the routing table and we'll be specific to EIGRP. And as you can see, we have successfully learned the remote networks. So everything seems to be working as expected. So you may be wondering how the two routers are able to communicate when they're not directly connected. And this is where we have the underlay network. And here I've got RIP running. I mean, we could have used static routes, but I wanted to have everything a bit more dynamic. Finally, let me just do one quick test and I'm going to do a trace route and I'm going to do this from the LAN subnets. So you'll notice that it's only one hop away and the trace route did not display all the hops in the underlay. So in the same fashion, the packet's time to live, TTL, is encapsulated as part of the payload. So the original TTL decreases by one only for the GRE tunnel, regardless of the number of hops we have in the transport network. Now let us move to the DMVPN side of things. And for this, I'm gonna use a different network topology. So in this new network topology, we have R11, R31 and R41, along with the SP router. So in our case, R11 is the DMVPN hub, R31 and R41 are the spokes. So let me roll back just a minute so we can draw this out. So initially at the very start, we had a GRE tunnel with R11 and R12, and this creates a point-to-point -point link. In the underlay, we had a routing protocol of RIP. Then in the overlay, we had EIGRP that helped us advertise LAN networks that were attached to R11, R12 across the GRE tunnel. But no matter what we do with the routing protocol or any tweaks with GRE, we have a point-to-point -point mode, which is GRE by its defaults. So now in our case, we've added a new router to the mix. And in DMVPN terms, this is called the spoke router. So it's much better to have GRE multipoint on the hub and then point to point on the spokes. And this really was the start of the DMVPN design. And it was known as DMVPN phase one, which means any traffic from spoke to spoke has to go through the hub as we have point to point tunnels on the spokes pointing to the hub. This works very differently to that of DMVPN phase three, where the spoke to spokes can communicate directly. So let's go straight to R11, which is the hub. So on R11, we'll have a look at the tunnel details and we can immediately see some differences that we had when we just had GRE running. So we do a show run int on the tunnel. So we have a tunnel source. We also have the IP address for tunnel, which is usual, but now we have GRE multipoint as we want to connect to the spokes. And now we have two spokes. We want to do this dynamically, but just entering the GRE multipoint command does not really satisfy this type of connectivity. So we need to put in one more additional command. And this is with the IP NH HRP command. So let's have a look at the show IP NHRP and this will let us view the NHRP cache. So the information that NHRP provides is a vital component of the operation of DMVPN. So every router maintains a cache of requests that it receives or is processing. So with this command, we'll display the local NHRP cache on that router. So NHRP is used to find the spokes as we don't have point to point on the hub anymore. It's just like how ARP works on Ethernet networks when you have the IP address and you want to find the MAC address. However, in this case, we're on a non-broadcast multi-access network and we can't use ARP. So as you can see, we have a mapping between the spokes, tunnel interface IP address and the NBMA, which is a non-broadcast multi-access address and we have a status of registered. We also have a type of dynamic, means we have learned this dynamically. So let's go a little bit further into DMVPN, and now we're gonna check the DMVPN details. And as you can see, we are the hub, and we have two registered spokes. So you may be thinking there needs to be some type of mapping somewhere, and this all can't magically appear. So there does need to be a mapping, especially with DMVPN phase one, and this is on the spokes. And if we jump to the spokes, we can see a mapping is done. And this is done with explicit configuration. So here with this configuration, we are mapping the hub tunnel IP address to its transport address. And once this happens, 
the spokes know how to get to the hub and they register themselves with the hub and now the hub knows how to reach both spokes and this really is the essence of DMVPN phase one. So finally before I wrap up let's do a quick trace and we're going to trace both the LAN interfaces and as this is DMVPN phase one and not phase three that we just spoke about, this will pass through the hub and it won't directly go from spoke to spoke. 